Now, I'm going to make some people unhappy when I say this, but whiskey, really invented by the Irish, okay? I know the Scots don't like to hear this, but what we do know is that the Irish, probably some Celtic monks, went down to the Iberian Peninsula in, say, 800, 900 AD, somewhere thereabouts, and learned from Mohammedan cultures there, Muslim cultures, how to distill, took it back to the present-day British Isles, and eventually took it to Scotland. Well, heck, they took the race there, and they took the language there, and yes, the idea of distillation, but haggis, no, the Scots invented that on their own, so don't blame the Irish for that one. Okay, but, but here we have the Irish taking distillation there, and we don't really know, again, when they started distilling. Some people have said St. Patrick in 400 AD. No, 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 no. St. Patrick had his own brewer, but there was no distillation going on. On the other hand, he had his own brewer. You gotta like the guy. He, you know, gets the idea of, of Ireland's beverages being built upon barley whether it's something like stout or whether it's something like Irish whiskey. Definitely built on barley, but we have other grains. We have corn, we have oats, we even have wheat. We have barley that's been malted and barley that's not been malted. Now, I know the books will say Irish whiskey is always triple distilled, pot stills from unmalted barley, but it's not so. A few brands are like that. It can be made from corn, from, from wheat, can be in continuous stills two times, three times, pot stills three times. It, it's all over the place. Irish whiskey, however, was once upon a time the whiskey. It was absolutely the whiskey. In 1900, if you walk into a, a London bar and you ask for a glass of whiskey, they don't hand you scotch, which they would do today. They hand you Irish. Why? Scotch, at this point in time, in 1900, the courts in London have yet to rule that you can make a blended scotch whiskey and have it be called scotch. Now, blended, right? Neutral grain spirit, soft and mild, blended with single malts and you end up with a softer, milder version of Scotch whiskey than you would if you had a single malt. Irish whiskey in 1900, these are all at this point in time, or virtually all of them, are single malts. So why are they softer and milder? Because the smallest still in Ireland is still bigger than the biggest still in Scotland. Why is that important? Well, think of it this way. When you vaporize your beer, you know, in, in distillation, you're vaporizing the, the alcohol in this beer and the vapor comes up and goes down the line arm. In a small still, it can pretty much do that pretty quickly, but you get a really big still, and we're talking, these things are huge, and the vapor kind of bounces around, it kind of knocks around. It can't really get all the way up to the top without hitting the sides a bunch of times and then recondensing and getting revaporized. It's like a continuous still, if you will, inside this big still that is typical of Ireland. And so what comes out the top has fewer congeners, fewer flavors, fewer aromas. And so in 1900, Irish whiskey was a softer, milder drink. Why were these stills so big? Well, let's go back in time a little bit. Let's go back into the 18th century when there were thousands and thousands of stills in Ireland. In the early 1700s, the Irish had started using unmalted barley. Why? Because the British desperately trying to tax them on all the whiskey they were making, decided to start taxing malted barley or barley malt, thinking, well, we can, we can track that real easily. And the Irish were like, nope, no problem. We'll just use unmalted barley. So that's where that tradition comes from. It's just trying to avoid taxation. It's the same reason why they have these big stills, because the British, desperate to try to tax the Irish for everything they were making, the Irish, of course, figuring it's their God-given duty not to pay taxes. Well, what happens is the British say, well, since we're having trouble taxing you on all the whiskey you make, we can tax you for every still we find. A huge tax which the Irish respond to by saying, then we'll make a huge still, okay? Huge still where they can crank out a whole lot of whiskey. So in 1787, there's people going through the country trying to count the thousands and thousands of legal stills. In uh, 1887, Lord Alfred Barnard does a, a survey and comes up with 28 distilleries. Um, certainly uh, chief amongst those reasons being that um, while the British have tried their best to shut things down, the Irish themselves have, have figured out a, a better system, and that's to say to, uh, to go to large-scale distillation. And that has been why they rule the world. When you walk into a bar in 1900 and you ask for a whiskey, you get an Irish. When you walk into a bar today, of course, and ask for a whiskey, you get a Scotch, uh, at least in London and most places in the world outside of North America. But the bottom line is the 19th century was not kind to the Irish. The potato famine, lots of immigration, that certainly compressed the industry a lot. But the industry really was being compressed at this point in time. And then in 1914, what happens in 1914? The Easter Rebellion. The Irish declare war or declare their independence from the British. 
This is during World War I. There are thousands of British soldiers dying on the, 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 the hills of Verdun and the battlefields in France. Now, the British, of course, see the Irish as just traitors. And Irish whiskey loses its market in London, its market in England. It's its dominant market. It's the most important market for the Irish whiskey producers. They lose that for really a good long time. But the Irish says, it's not a problem. We know what to do. We're just going to sell Irish whiskey to our brethren there in America, you know, because many of our brothers have moved to America. Do prohibition, anybody? Yeah, so uh, they don't have a market in America, and they really don't have much of a market through most of the 20th century. And Irish whiskey producers, we were down to two distilleries about 20 years ago. We now have four. One just opened only a few months ago. And so things are, are definitely looking up for Irish whiskey. In frankness, Irish whiskey has never had, or at least in our lifetimes, it's never had as good a look at the marketplace as it has today. Indeed, the last two years, Irish whiskey is the fastest growing spirit category in the U.S. marketplace. Things are going nuts. You have great traditional brands like Jameson that we have seen for a, a long time, and, and uh, I, I would certainly argue that they taste as sweet as they ever have. And then brands that most of us never even saw, had only read about, that are showing up in the U.S. marketplace. In terms of sales for Irish whiskey, this is as good as it's ever been, and I bet things are only going to get better.